We're going to look at the permutations lab, and this is a completed code right here for the English version. We're going to look at both. I'm just going to show you some of the things, uh, the variables I used. I did use a set to store all the English words in. Now, as you're just starting the permutations and you don't care which ones are English and which ones are just mumbo jumbo, some letters, this doesn't matter. You don't need this hash set. Uh, but when you want to know which of those jumbled permutations are also words, you will need uh, to import the file. I used a scanner and then I added each individual word uh, to the set that I called set. Uh, I created it up here because I knew I would need to use it outside of the main. And so I declared it outside the main and I made it static so I can use it inside all the static methods. And uh, so yeah, I instantiated it here and I filled it up inside the code I'm not going to show you. Uh, the reason I use team as the uh, word is because team has a lot of permutations that are English words, probably more so than, than most words, maybe even the most. Uh, over here on the right, you can see that here's all the permutations that are in the English language. Uh, I can easily just permute it and show all permutations regardless of if they're words or not. And we'll see that right here. And you see all the permutations of team right here. Okay, so how to do it, I gave you all the pseudocode. Uh, what I have here is I've created two methods, almost identical, except I just called them permute English and permute English. They're to the public private pair. And the only difference is in the permute English, instead of just if the length of S was zero, instead of just printing out chosen, I also made sure that the set contained the string chosen. Uh, and I did force it to lowercase because if you look the at least the string I'm using is uppercase, and I didn't want to have a difference between upper and lowercase, so I just converted it to lowercase before I checked to see if it was in there. Uh, and then I only printed out the permutations that were also words in the English language, and you saw that the first time around. Uh, I still have my original methods. I don't want to scroll down and show. I guess I can cover up this code. I still have my original two methods down below, the regular permute uh, private and the uh, public. One thing I want to warn you about, I'm not going to open up my methods here. I don't want you to see all the code, uh, but make sure there is inside of permute, you call the permute method itself. That's a recursive step. Make sure that when you create the permute English, that inside the permute English, you call permute English. Don't You don't inside permute English call the other permute. So when you copy and paste your code from permute into permute English, it'll originally be calling this method but you don't want to call the permute method, you want to uh, call the permute English method. Okay, so this is the output. Let's go ahead and put a different word in. Uh, if you're going to put other words in, shark, it's got a lot of permutations, but because it's got weird letters like K, you're not going to see an H, you're not going to see many English words based on shark. In fact, I think you might only see shark. Oh, harks, there we go. All right, so just to warn you, you put in other words, especially if they got weird letters like K's, X's, and H's, there's gonna be a lot less uh, words out there that'll also be English words with using those letters.